Well, look, we've all been there before. You know that feeling like your heart has skipped a beat? But what if that feeling of a flutter or racing heartbeat happens regularly? Well, you may have a condition called atrial fibrillation or AFib. Well, September is National Atrial Fibrillation Awareness Month, and health leaders expect AFib to double in the next 10 years. And I went to find out why. 59-year-old John Ferguson has always been a man on the go. I spent 11 and a half years, almost 12 years in uh, U.S. Army Special Forces. Jumping from planes and patrolling rugged terrain and hostile territory. Then fighting crime as the police officer in E-Course and Gross Eel. And with the DEA as a task force officer. Turns out the only person who could slow down John was John. I would feel a fluttering in my chest. It was the first sign that something was wrong. John has atrial fibrillation. He calls the diagnosis incredibly scary. A quickening of my heart and I could feel it again. I would take my pulse. I would feel out of breath. I would feel I would start sweating sometimes. Classic signs of AFib. It's the most common heart rhythm disorder in the world. And John's doctor, Arfat Khan, chief of electrophysiology at Henry Ford Health, says atrial fibrillation is when the two top chambers of the heart no longer fully contract. Almost to the point where about 400 to 500 times a minute, the heart is contracting to the point where the top chamber of the heart doesn't squeeze anymore. And that compromises the heart's ability to pump, so you may feel that skipping heartbeat, palpitations, and fatigue. Taking out the garbage, mowing the lawn, they'll be more winded or tired in doing that. Dr. Khan says atrial fibrillation affects 40 million people worldwide and 6 million in the U.S., but that number is expected to explode, doubling to 12 million in the U.S. in the next 10 years, in part because Americans are living longer and age is a big factor in developing AFib. Another reason? We have better methods now to detect it, right? We have patients that wear, are wearing wearable devices, smartwatches such as the Apple Watch. And that's led to a surge of patients. Atrial fibrillation usually isn't fatal, but does lead to an increased risk of stroke. That's because when blood pools, the solids in the blood begin to form clots. Those clots can cause a stroke. And that risk is higher in women who tend to have more frequent and longer lasting AFib episodes than men. And when they suffer a stroke, those strokes are often more severe. There's no cure for atrial fibrillation, but the main goal is to decrease the burden of the condition. Blood thinners to reduce stroke risk, beta blockers to slow down the heart, and the treatment John received, a cardiac ablation. That's when doctors use a catheter to burn or freeze the heart cells causing the abnormal rhythm. It worked for John. I couldn't wait to get it over so I could start a normal life. Traveling with his wife in their RV and enjoying retirement. We just started playing pickleball because that's a thing now, I guess. It is a thing now, uh, and we're so glad that John is doing well. Dr. Khan says anyone with sleep apnea should be screened for AFib. He also encourages his patients to exercise, adopt a healthy diet, avoid smoking, and avoid alcohol. John, of course, doing well now since that ablation says he noticed there was a connection between alcohol consumption and episodes of AFib, and now he's more watchful about how much alcohol he consumes, and that's going to be particularly important as we move into the holiday season where there are a lot more parties and people yeah. just gathering. And again,